Hey, yo, how's it going? Six Foot Hacks here. Happy for y'all today. The team builder for the first round of playoffs. Actually, I don't even know if I'm going to put this before the actual battle or if I'm going to upload this separately. Or maybe upload it like an hour before or something the actual match goes live. Uh, regardless, though, if you do enjoy this, hit that thumbs up button down below because we are hopefully going to be able to win it here and go into the semifinals. So we are facing... Top coach of the Pittsburgh Piratatas. Funnily enough, we did face him in the last uh, week, the final week of the regular season. And he actually ended up beating us. If you guys saw my commentary, you will know that I didn't necessarily care too much about that battle because it did not affect me in any type of way. So I just kind of clicked buttons and we ended up losing. Obviously, this time around, I'm going to take it a little bit more serious and put more uh, thought into my prep. So looking at the matchup, I really feel like Tup's matchup is really good against me because the scary aspect of Tup's team is the fact that his offense outspeeds my offense, which my offense is very scary, especially when I can outspeed my opponent's offense. So for example, Skyman, Zera Aura, and Battle Bond Greninja, if it's activated, are going to be able to basically destroy any type of offense that I want to bring to this game. Obviously, Skyman is a huge issue as well for my defensive mons because it does have uh, Serene Grace with Air Slash. Zero Aura's move pool is pretty amazing against me. And then Battle Bond, Grin, Dual Stab is a little bit of an issue to deal with. I guess the good thing is, is that I have decent priority on my squad, so I need to be very careful with how I use my priority going into this game to try and deal with this offense. A real, real big issue that I noticed the first game that I played up was that Scarf Diggersby can actually just destroy me if I don't bring Cresselia. So I need to be very careful of that. I 100% expect them to bring Scarf Diggersby again because they pretty much just won him the game in our final week match. And then Claydol, I don't expect Claydol to come. Claydol is an unmon, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, Milotic, I'm not sure if he would want to bring it. He didn't bring a game one. We have Thunderous and Ferrothorn. So it has a bit of a rough matchup, so I could see why he may not want to bring it. Same thing with Milk Tank. We have Double Fighting and even Dark Cry is able to bop it, so I don't expect Milk Tank. Uh, Entei seriously is not going to come, I think, just because of Alamomola. We brought Alamomola our first game. So, you can expect us to not bring it again. And then Latios has a bit of a rough matchup because of Mars Shadow and Dark Cry specifically. So, I don't expect that. Plus, it can't really break through Snorlax anyways. And then Togekiss. Man, I'm so scared <laughs> that Tup is going to bring like Scarf, Skyman. Not, yeah, Scarf, Skyman and Scarf, Togekiss just to, to flinch us down with, the, with his uh, flinch core there. And then he's going to have like a bunch of T-Wave Mons in the back and just... Oh, that would be really, really scary. Although, I guess if he does bring Scarf Togekiss and Scarf Skyman, then he won't have Scarf Diggersby, so that's kind of good. Who knows, he could pull a Danza and bring Triple Scarfers uh, to see how things go. So, yeah, his offense is what I'm mainly fearing going into this game. Like, his defensive mons, like Milotic, uh, Togekiss, and Milk Tank, and I guess Mega Scizor 2 is decently bulky. Like, those defensively are not entirely too problematic to me, I think. It's more or less something like Scarf Diggers B, the Zero Aura, the Skyman, and Battle Bond Grin if it turns into Ash form. So, yeah, his offense, really scary. Defensive ones, we should be able to deal with accordingly. So, with that being said, let's take a look at our first team member here. So, starting off our lineup here, we have good old Mars Shadow. In game number one, Mars Shadow, I brought a sub three attack set, figuring that I could try to get up behind a sub if I were to force a switch out. But realistically, he shouldn't ever allow me to substitute on any of his mons in general. Plus, again, his offense is able to outspeed me. So I figured that if I can bring a Mars Shadow with a set that outspeeds his Pokemon that he assumes will outspeed me, then that could allow me to get a very surprise KO against him. And then even though he will know that I am Scarf for the remainder of the battle, the only way that he will be able to play around it is trying to switch in correctly to whatever uh, one of my dual stabs he assumes I'm going to go for. So in that case, I can easily still take advantage of that because if I do get up hazards in this game, whatever he's switching in, whether it be something that resists a hit, is still going to be taking rocks damage and an adamant stabbed uh, Spectral Thief or potentially close combat. Ice Punch is literally only there 
for the Skyman. If he's not Scarf Skyman, and I know he's not Scarf Skyman, then I will be able to guarantee outspeed him and bop him with the Ice Beam. Realistically, because of the speed tiers that he has, I don't need to run a lot of speed on this Marshadow. I just need to guarantee that I outspeed uh, his fastest Pokemon, which I think is Zeraora. It's Zeraora or Skyman. I just have to ensure that I outspeed one of those two, and then I also outspeed potentially something like Scarfed Entei. That's his fastest Scarfer that he that I think he could bring. But regardless of that, with this speed, we outspeed Scarf Diggersby, which I fully expect Scarf Diggersby. So I don't want to assume he's gonna bring Scarf Skyman, but I am ter I am terrified of the fact that it could be Scarf Skyman with Scarf Togekiss and he just wants to try and flinch everything. So while this may not have like the raw power that Choice Bandit or Life Orb has, it has a surprise factor and it hits ridiculously hard with an Adam in nature as it is. The defensive investment is because this allows us to live a plus two Adamant Scissors Bullet Punch and then we can steal the boost with Spectral Thief and then we're gonna be Scarfed at plus two. And if he doesn't have any other form of priority like Water Shuriken, then we just basically sweep him with a plus two Adamant Scarfed uh, Mars Shadow. So yeah, kind of, that's kind of the idea behind this set. That's mainly why I have so much physical defense because it allows me to take a Bullet Punch a lot easier and this still hits just ridiculously hard with its dual stab. Shadow Sneak on there may seem a little bit odd, but it's kind of nice in case I do know who he has Scarf. Skyman so I can bring this in and he thinks I'm Scarf so he thinks he'll outspeed me if it's low enough Shadow Sneak can knock him out and that would be amazing so yeah hoping Mars Shadow puts in a little bit of work here so moving on to our next Mon we have Mega Medicham this is literally the exact set and exact EV spread I brought from our week 10 matchup mainly for the fact that it just kind of does things like it murders his entire there's nothing there's literally nothing <laughs> on Tub's team that's gonna switch in and take two hits from this. There's no chance, no chance whatsoever. So high jump kick is really, really spammable. Ice punch and high jump kick are pretty much the only offense that I even need in this game because both of those moves hit absolutely everything. He doesn't have a fighting type, so I don't necessarily need uh, Zen Headbutt or Psycho Cut. And then having double priority is phenomenal because again, he has such a fast team. He has so many fast Pokemon that the double priority is amazing because it allows us to be able to still pressure his offense with the set and then he's going to need to be careful on how he plays around this and if I do get on my hazards then regardless of what happens I'll be able to chip down his offense put them in range of either Scarf Mars Shadow or in range of where Medicham can just come in with its double priority to hopefully knock them out but yeah this pretty much murders his entire defensive core. It can really pressure his offensive core as well. The speed EVs were enough for a jolly non-scarf Diggersby, I think. It was either non-scarf Diggersby or a timid max speed Togekiss. And then we just put the rest in HP just to kind of have a little bit of bulk. So our next team member is going to be Velveteen, AKA Darkrai. Now in our first game, I initially had Alamomola on this slot. But I figured that Alamomola literally didn't do anything game number one. I'm very positive he's not gonna bring Entei, and even if he brings Scizor, so long as Scizor doesn't uh, Swords Dance to plus two, it shouldn't be a problem. So the way this team is structured, there should be no chance that, uh, that the Scizor ever gets more than just one Swords Dance. So in that case, we should be okay to still deal with him. But the nice thing about Darkrai in this match is that if I can force a switch out, then behind a sub with Expert Belt, I basically 2 AKO just about the entirety of his team. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I like I think unless he has like really no, even like Spadef Milotic. Yeah, after hazards, I think after Stealth Rocks, I basically 2 AKO everything because of the expert belt boost. I uh, kind of maybe wanted to go life or but I don't want to lose 25% of my health and then take an initial 10% every single time I go for an offensive move. Although I guess in that case, it would be a lot more difficult for him to switch into Darkrai in general. Uh, regardless though, I still feel like expert belt is good enough. Dark Pulse hits everything still ridiculously hard. I guess only Thunderbolt and HP Fire are really going to be the two moves that are boosted. But even then, that extra damage that they are going to be able to do is going to be amazing. Obviously, Hit of Power Fire is pretty much only there for the Scizor and it's still able to uh, straight to a KO it or potentially Oko it I think 
after rocks and a little bit of chip if he's not specially defensive so that's going to be amazing dark can definitely take moves from his fat mons and in return uh try and beat them down with dark pulse hopefully so maybe this will put in a little bit of work i'm hoping much like marshadow that this set kind of catches him off guard and that maybe i can nab a surprise ko because any type of kills i could get obviously is going to be really good for the rest of our team especially if it is against one of his uh speedier threats so moving on to the next team member here we have good old needle king much like mega medicham the exact same set and spread the issue that happened in our week 10 match against tup was that his zera aura straight up crit my Needle King on my initial switch in, which means I would have been 2 KO'd by a Hidden Power Ice after the crit. So the crit put me in range of where a regular HP Ice would have knocked me out. And then I wasn't able to get on my Stealth Rocks. And that was a huge, huge issue as well. Not being able to have those Rocks up to get that chip damage so we didn't just freely switch in and out. So hopefully this time around, Needle King doesn't get critted and I can get up my Stealth Rocks. If I get up Rocks in this match, they will definitely be so so beneficial scar from our shadow has a much easier time against his offense and his offense is slowly put in range of where double priority mega medicham will eventually be able to pick them off plus the rocks are also really nice for my dark cry because they'll chip down things like my lotic and milk tank to hopefully put them in range of where i can always guarantee to a ko them so that's all i really need needle king to do in this match i just needed to live two hits from zera aura and get up Brox. That's all. That's all Needle King has to do. That's all I wanted to do. So hopefully that will happen. Our three offensive moves here hit the entirety of his team for neutral or super effective damage. I think I did originally actually have Ice Beam over Fire Blast, but I realized that if I kept Ice Beam and didn't put Fire Blast, the Mega Scizor, which is already a giant problem as it is, uh, could obviously get up more than one Sword Zance on my Needle King and then sweep me late game so fire blast ensures that i have a chance to oko him after rocks depending on his potential ev spread uh next off we have good old bam bam same set and ev spread from our week 10 match it didn't really get to do much because it got hacked hopefully this time around though i can bring it in late game and potentially try and win with it and then our main win condition potentially is going to be uh comfy here mainly for the fact that again priority is just so good against his team and if I am able to calm mind up once his team has been weakened, if for some reason I don't have Marshadow or Medicham left, then Comfy can come in, I can Drain and Kiss, and uh, potentially win after a calm mind. So yeah, HP Fire hits the Mega Scizor, Drain and Kiss hits everything else, and... Yeah, that's, uh, that's basically the team. There's not really much else to say. Most of the sets are the same, but uh, the main surprise factor that I'm hoping will give us a bit of an edge is Scarf Marshadow and Substitute on Darkrai. Again, I can weaken his Mons, I can weaken his offense with both of these, or beat his offense with both of these, and getting rid of his offense in general is going to be amazing because his walls already should not be an issue for um, Mega Medicham here, Calm Mind, Comfy, or Curse Snorlax. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into either the battle or the battle will be going up after this is uploaded. So yeah, eventually I will see you guys, so later. Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from flying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain Tears are hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real